We're going to the Heineken tour. Then they're stopping their game next to ours. Are you yeah. excited? Yeah. An interesting, very interesting pizza here. $102, audience, deal or no deal? Welcome back to the channel. If you haven't already, make sure you check out part one of our trip on the beautiful and modern Norwegian Prima. We were just starting day three of our cruise, and we woke up to find ourselves in the lovely city of Amsterdam. We had just departed a few days earlier from Southampton, but after running into some bad weather, we had to forego our first day in this port. After Amsterdam, we would be moving on to Norway and Iceland. Morning guys from beautiful sunny Amsterdam. Well, we made it to Amsterdam, we went through the canals and the locks last night, and so we're here. A day late, but we're still here. It's about 8 in the morning right now, and we're going to go get some breakfast before going out on the town. I think today we're going to go to the local for breakfast. You can get breakfast here, as well as all of the other main dining rooms, so you don't just have to go to a main dining room. There's other places you can get breakfast as well. And you also don't just have to go to the buffet, which is always super hectic and filled with children. Yeah, so we're going to go to the local and see what we can find. The local is a pub-style restaurant located on Deck 8 in the aft of the ship. This restaurant has a bar and tables on one side, and traditional seating on the other. It's always a popular place, and is open for all meals as well as late night snacks. There's also a separate menu from the main dining rooms here. They knew who they were dealing with at the size of these coffee cups. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's a cup of coffee. I decided to go with the breakfast sandwich, and Catherine went with the American breakfast. Looks like a nice little breakfast there. Yeah. Very good breakfast sandwich. A lot of egg in there, it's really good, but very greasy. I think it's coated with butter on top, so it's very, very weird on the hands. After breakfast, we made our way out to the gangway and headed into Amsterdam. So we're here in Vandal Park on the west side of Amsterdam, kind of away from the canals. But we're planning on just making our way from Vondel Park over here through to the museums, the Van Gogh Museum and the Rijksmuseum. And then we'll be at the Heineken Experience. So we have a tour planned there and yeah, we're looking forward to it. It was a beautiful day and we got to see so many different things. We enjoyed just walking through the streets and the parks of the city. We saw the Van Gogh Museum, the Concert House, the Stedelijk Museum, the Rijksmuseum and more. So we're just walking down the street now. We just saw the Van Gogh Museum and the Rijksmuseet. Um, very cool, very charming area, but now we're going to the Heineken tour. So we're excited about that. It's 10.30 in the morning, so I don't know how well beer is gonna go, but oh well, we're on vacation. We found our way to the Heineken experience and were instantly in awe of the branding that was everywhere. We felt like we were looking through green colored glasses. This tour was actually a great experience. There were so many things to see. There were guided portions of the tour, 3D and immersive experience, and of course, a couple free drinks. Unfortunately, we couldn't use much of the footage from here because they were blasting music the whole time. Still, it was a really great experience and well worth the entrance fee. Our tickets cost 23 euros. All right, so we were just at the Heineken tour, which was great, and now we're looking for some Dutch pancakes. So we'll see if we can find some. It didn't take long before we found a restaurant where we could get some pancakes. Ready for some pancakes? I'm excited. They look really good. We're gonna get a sweet and a savory one, mm -hmm. so we'll see how they are. We also decided to get some very unhealthy and sugary coffee drinks. Well, we have the savory one. It's really good. Bacon and cheese? Yeah. Heck yes. Got the sweet one. Maple syrup, stroopwafel, and whipped cream. Looks <laughs> really sweet. sweet, yeah. After mixing the Heinekens with pancakes, we figured we should walk all those calories off. We headed down one of the many canals of the city, passing by several landmarks on the way, including the Anne Frank Museum, the New Church, the Dom Square Palace, the National Monument, and much more.
Eventually, we found the need to stop for some refreshments once again. Nothing like a good Belgian beer when you're in the Netherlands. You got a Heineken now. Yeah, one in Amsterdam. Yeah, right? brewed locally. <laughs> To close out our day in Amsterdam, we decided to stop at the National Maritime Museum. We heard some really great reviews of the exhibits in this building, and they even have a few old ships that you can tour. Now why, Catherine, did you want to learn about that little guy in his little wooden boat? I mean, who else is going to want to learn about him, right? Yeah. Someone's gotta. <laughs> well, what'd you learn? It's a nice boat. Hmm. We love globes, don't we? Yes, you especially love globes. Yeah. What are we going to see now? Amsterdam, Portland City. Yeah. We're going to go out to the ship now, right? Are you yeah. excited? Yeah. Actually, I'm more excited probably. You are, but I'm excited too. Yeah. This ship is a replica of the Dutch East India Company ship, the Amsterdam. The original ship was built in the mid-18th century, and we could learn all about how the ship worked, the sailors who were on board, and how life worked on a ship like this at the time. It was a really interesting exhibit, and well worth the visit. After spending a couple hours at the Maritime Museum, we headed back to the port to reboard the ship. The process of getting back on the Prima was extremely easy, and before we knew it, we were back in our room. Well, we're back from a fun day in Amsterdam, and now it's about 7.30, and we are going to dinner. And tonight we're actually going to the first dinner that we've had in a specialty restaurant here in the Norwegian Prima. So, of course, there's the main dining rooms and the local and things like that that are all included. And then there's several specialty restaurants, like the one we're going to tonight, where you have to pay extra. But we did the free at sea package, which gives us two free specialty restaurant nights. So one of those nights is tonight. We're going to Onda by Scarpetti, which is an Italian style restaurant. And yeah, we'll see how it is. Onda by Scarpetti can only be found on four NCL ships. So we were really in for a treat. We were excited to try some Italian cuisine. The restaurant itself was a comfortable and modern space, although it didn't really scream Italy to us. We noticed this in many of the themed restaurants and spaces on the ship. None of them really seemed themed. They just all looked like modern, elegant spaces. Take from that what you will, but we really did enjoy the Chicago-themed steakhouse, the Irish-style pub, and the Asian-themed restaurants, as well as things like the French bistro on the other ships. Now, that's not to say that the food wasn't good. In fact, it was just as delicious as it would be on the other ships. The menu in Onda by Scarpetti was quite extensive, and included appetizers, pizzas, pasta courses, second courses, and a list of sides. It wasn't quite clear what we could order with our meal package. We were using our free at sea, free specialty dining. So we just started with some appetizers. We got some bread with the tomato spread, creme fraiche, and olive oil. It was amazing. We also ordered a pizza, which we waited for eagerly. The pizza finally arrived, and we were a bit surprised at what sat before us. An interesting, very interesting pizza here. I think the crust is stuffed. Looks good though. With ricotta. Stuffed with ricotta, ooh. In addition to the pizza, I ordered a burrata cheese with prosciutto, and Catherine ordered the braised octopus appetizer. Finally, our mains arrived. I ordered the tagliatelle with lobster, and Catherine got the scalatelli. Along with this, we ordered sides of mushrooms, fingerling potatoes, and some very dark roasted carrots. Now we're just waiting for our desserts. We should have a chocolate cake. And tiramisu. And tiramisu. Yeah. Should be good. We've also started moving, so that's exciting. The best part of cruising, you just sit down to dinner, and then all of a sudden you look out the window, and you're like, oh, we're leaving. Yeah, we're moving. Yeah. All right, so of course we had to get dessert. So Catherine went with the tiramisu, which looks really good. And I went with, I think it's a chocolate cake. It's very, very, very small with some caramel gelato, so we'll see how it tastes. Maybe it really packs a punch. Oh, this cake is so dense. It's almost like a mousse. I don't know if you could see that, but that does not look like a consistency of cake. It's really good though. I'm pretty sure a slice of this would kill me, so I'm glad that it's this small. 
So we just got back from our time at Onda by Scarpetti, and it was really good. The food was delicious. There was a little bit of confusion about what we could actually order with the meal plan, and usually they explain that to us first, but they didn't this time. So we had to ask, and it was, <laughs> it was very confusing, especially when a normal Italian meal will consist of the antipasta or the appetizer, and then a pasta course and a second course. Um, but here you basically got the appetizer and then either a main course or a second course. One or, the, one or the other, not both. And then a dessert. So it was a little bit confusing at first, but we made it. <laughs> the sides were kind of lackluster. They were okay. We probably would have been fine if we didn't get them. But the mains were really good. And the appetizers were absolutely delicious. That pizza was amazing. So yeah, we would definitely recommend if you have a meal plan. On to buy Scarpetti is pretty good. So now I think we're going to pretty much call it a night. We're going to go up to the observation lounge, hopefully find a seat there, because we still have a ways to go to sail out of this canal to get out of Amsterdam. But hopefully we can get some good views before all the light goes away. The sail out from Amsterdam was so incredibly peaceful and calm. There wasn't a sound in the air. After some time on our balcony, we did find our way up to a very crowded observation lounge. It is jam-packed in here tonight. Just having a little drink before bed. Eventually, the industrial part of town fell away, and we slowly floated out towards the sea locks. That signaled the end of the night for us. Good morning, guys. Welcome to day four of our cruise here to Iceland. And it's a sea day, the first scheduled sea day. And boy, is it a day at sea. It is windy out there, it is wavy, but this ship is actually feeling pretty good compared to some of the other ships. We would be rocked around a lot more on the Gem or the Epic if we were in these conditions. So kudos to them on building a sturdy ship. But yeah, today we don't really have anything planned. We're going to go to a session on how to run this big hotel. That should be interesting this morning. And then we're gonna go to lunch. I haven't figured out where yet. And then this afternoon, we're probably going to do the Deal or No Deal game show, which is a game show that they do on every cruise with NCL. It's based loosely on Howie Mandel's Deal or No Deal. And then we'll see what we'll do this afternoon. There's a bunch of musical acts lined up, get a few drinks, and enjoy our day before we get to Bergen tomorrow. We woke up a bit late, so we decided to just get a light breakfast in the observation lounge, which serves breakfast until 11. The Observation Lounge is a beautiful part of Deck 17 forward. From here you can get views 270 degrees out all sides of the ship. From the Observation Lounge we went to the presentation of the officers on how to run a floating hotel. This was held in the Penrose Theatre, which is a beautiful, if not slightly small, theatre with two seating levels. The presentation was great and we learned how the hotel side of operations are run from the various beverage, food, security, housekeeping, and guest services officers. It's really nice that NCL put something like this on, and we were really looking forward to a similar talk from the officers in the bridge and engine room later in this cruise. From there we headed to the atrium, where a surprisingly entertaining game of bags was taking place. It was afternoon now, so we made it lunchtime. We headed to Indulge Food Hall to get a bite to eat. Indulge is one of the complimentary venues, which is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's located in the aft of the ship, and it's broken up into several different areas. It's really quite an interesting space. You can order all your food directly from the tablet at your table. The food arrives there in mere minutes, and it's a really nice concept. We came here quite often during the cruise. So we're in the Indulge Food Hall, and they do have one of those Coke free style machines where it's like you collect, you can select Coke, Sprite, the, any of those types of sodas, and it's like a syrup that we think. Yeah. And it, it just seems to be low on sugar, almost watered down tasting, and it, they almost kind of look different. Like they do. This is the Coke we got from the bar that tastes good, and then this is from the free style machine. So if you like Coke and you're in Indulge, go to the bar. Yeah. What are you thinking today? I don't know. The rotisserie chicken kind of sounded good. Mm -hmm. 
but the barbecue we had the other night was really good. Too. That was really good. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to take a look. Thank you. So Catherine went with the chicken, which came out in like two seconds. Same with the crab meat tostada. We also got more because we're monsters. How are your first bites? They're really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This tostada is really good too. We had to get the dates again because they're just so good. And I still have a pulled pork sandwich coming, so I'm looking forward to that. Got the pulled pork sandwich and some cornbread. Catherine just destroyed the dessert before I could even get the camera out. <laughs> At Indulge Food Hall, they have a small little dessert cart. Um, it seems to like they, they rotate them every day or so. Um, and they're just kind of like bite sized, just a couple bites of a variety of desserts. And then they also have ice cream. Now that lunch was over, we made our way back to the auditorium for a deal or no deal game. In this game, you have to purchase a card and you have a choice to be chosen as a game participant. Even if you're not chosen, you still have a chance to win from several prizes, including a free cruise. I actually won $200 on a previous NCL cruise, but apparently that luck didn't translate here. We walked away empty-handed. We visited the Penrose Bar in the atrium for a bit before spending some more money on bingo cards. NCL holds bingo games on every sea day of the cruise. On this cruise, all the prizes were between $800 and $1,200 for each of the three games. Again, Lady Luck was not smiling upon us, so we didn't get any part of that prize money. For dinner tonight, we were going to the Commodore Room, another one of the complimentary main dining rooms. This venue is much smaller than Hudson's, so we did have to wait for a bit in the Belvedere Bar for a table. So we're getting dinner in the Commodore room. We're just waiting about, they said, 30 minutes to get a table for two. So if you want to eat here or at Hudson's, make sure you get a reservation or come early. We actually only had to wait for about 15 minutes, so it wasn't too bad. We actually just got our drinks and then they buzzed us in, so... The Commodore Room is also an elegant space, and very nice for eating dinner. You'll have the exact same menu here as you do in the larger main dining room, Hudson's. We started healthy today. Catherine got the Cobb salad, and then I got the Caesar salad, which looks very good, nice and creamy. And then we also got some spring rolls to share, although I'm probably gonna eat them all because Catherine doesn't really like spring rolls, and I know this, that's why I ordered them. Salad was okay. There was one giant crouton, which I didn't really like. I like the little croutons. And then, of course, the sauce actually was true Caesar salad sauce with, I could taste the anchovies. So not my favorite, but it was okay. How was your salad? Mine was just okay, too. I think I'm learning I don't like Cobb salad. <laughs> Um, well, that's a good thing to learn on free stuff, so. I know. I think I always think a Cobb salad is a wedge salad. Oh. Um, so. Well, yeah. it's not. <laughs> but the spring rolls are delicious. That sauce is so good. It's a big piece of chicken. Yeah, geez. <laughs> and then I got the pork chop, which looks absolutely delicious. Sun-dried tomatoes on there, and then some broccoli, because you got to put some green on the plate. Wow, the first couple bites are amazing. So good with the sun-dried tomatoes on there. Cooked perfectly too, not too tough. Sometimes pork chops get really tough, but this is really good. How's yours? It's really good. Yeah, looks really good. Really flavorful, really juicy. I did taste it. It was delicious. Just finishing off the carcass there. <laughs> I offered to save the wishbone, but you didn't seem to want to. I've got everything I need right here. <laughs> of course we asked for the dessert menu. A little strudel and some chocolate mousse. Excited? Yeah. We ended the night listening to some music in the Metropolitan Lounge. Join us in our next video where we arrive in Norway. Here we take a bus up a mountain, enjoy some time in the fjord, and then head off to Iceland. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one!